It's all on one. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Let's begin our Board of Trustees meeting tonight with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I welcome everyone here. We have a few extra people in the audience tonight. Uh, since our last meeting, I received an email from Cami, and I hope I'm not butchering your last name, DeSaltis? Desitels. Desitels, I'm sorry. <laughs> Desitels. Hopefully I'll remember that. Uh, asking to be heard tonight, this is our regular August meeting for the Library Trustees, which means we have business to attend to. Um, and I explained that we would dedicate the first 10 minutes to public statements. Anyone can be heard from the audience. This isn't a question and answer period, and I only request that everybody respect everyone involved in the situation. So, with that being said, we've got the next 10 minutes, and anyone, please step up to the front table. If you were using, uh, we're going by the rules of our town meetings and asking people to give the name and address uh, and for <coughs> the sake of our secretary, so she doesn't have to try to remember the spelling of everybody's names. If you'd write it down, that would be very helpful. So, anybody wish to begin? No. Okay, thank you, Kim. So, should I my name down? Please. <coughs> Do I have to tell you my address or just write it? That's fine. Okay. I'm going to read from this so I don't mess up. <laughs> um, the final 3-2 vote to terminate Miss Kathy Dunton did not speak for me, my children, or many of the Dudley residents. The way the last meeting was held was disgraceful in my eyes. Miss Kathy Dunton was fired for something that was found to be untrue based on an affidavit provided. After 13 years of commitment to the library, and to our children, that's the thing she gets. Kathy Carbignani and Richard Clark were stand-up trustees at the last meeting held. Both were the only ones who took the time to ask the right questions, to dig a little deeper, reviewed some of the letters and the affidavit provided with open minds. They did not sit quietly waiting to give what seemed to be a predetermined vote or pre-written speech. Miss Kathy's spirit was what made the children's library truly a breath of fresh air when you compare it to other libraries. She has touched the hearts of so many people in our community, our elementary schools, even surrounding townspeople who go out of their way to bring their children there because of her and the environment that she has created. Honestly, and I don't mean this any other way, I didn't even know who the library director was until this had all happened. Ms. Wall never once introduced herself to me or my children the entire four years that she's been there. If you are looking for the library to survive and thrive, which you should, then this was not the right decision to make. You, rep you represent the people of Dudley and the way this was handled was unacceptable and will be remembered come next election. Next. Do I have to put my address? There are people that are getting their houses uh, broken into and vandalized, and I don't think I want that to happen. What do you need me to sign here? Um, just your name, and I'm going to trust you that you're a Dudley resident. I can show you my license, but I also know who you are, so yeah. I didn't come with a prepared statement. Um, we got a couple of people that noticed the last time that we were here that this is serious. You people never took anybody's voices, opinions, nothing. You ran this meeting last time over a lawyer. You didn't know how to run your meeting. He just controlled you like a puppet. And you know what you did was wrong. I heard a lot of things come out of your mouth, how much you like Miss Kathy. And not one of you is in here pronounced her name correctly. It's Mrs. Kathy Dutton Farnsworth. 
you didn't even have the respect to show her her own name. Terrible. It is absolutely terrible. And you can sit there with your smirks, you can go home to your families, you can all be happy. What about Miss Kathy? Not a racist. We have some racist politicians, don't we? You have some racist people that are getting paid in the youth that are coming back. This woman was nothing but racist. You guys all have a group, you guys all have an agenda, and it's well known. I've heard you say the words, I have so much money, I can ruin them. Remember to yourself. You can say that, but you remember to yourself. Is it your money, or is it mom and dad's and your wife's? It's not nice what you did to Miss Kathy. You think you have all the money, you can do whatever you want. Your name is written all over this place. Is it your family's, or is it your name? I know it's no questions, I don't expect you to answer it. You're not a nice person. What you did, you threw under the bus. Do you know her father passed away? Paying your respects to her? You even have a face to do any of that, any of you? You guys work with her. This lady's miserable. She is terrible. You walk in there, she has that powder on every time she's in there. I go in there to take my daughter's name off of a list. We don't know where the book is. She smirks, she laughs. I have so much respect for this woman, or I have respect for her. You think this is funny? These are our kids. Our kids, and I'm taking them off a reading list. And you could care less. You're gonna be in your little groups, your little families, and off you go. This poor woman was being coached by the lawyer outside in the hallway. Luckily enough, she's a grown enough woman to know that she can speak her own mind. She voted no. None of you can do that. Prepared statements? You guys are the only one hear what we have to say? Pathetic. I'm in touch with Crawford. I'm gonna be well in touch with Crawford. Just like I know you guys are buddy buddies, but poor man, 94 years old, this is how you treat his mother's name. Filthy. Sorry, ladies, you have to hear that, kids. Look at the summertime. Kids are in the classroom. Satna Lane. I am speaking on behalf of Alexandra Burby. She couldn't be here today. <coughs> I am a Dudley resident. And what she wanted me to say was what did Kathy, who does a wonderful job and is obviously well liked due to warrant being fired, what they said she did turned out to be untrue. Was there something else? If so, what? And was it bad enough to be fired? I think others may be asking these things, which they have, um, which is the big question. And since we are Dudley residents, why weren't we told the reason why she was fired? Thank you. Thanks. since Kathy started, and she brought her son there. Kathy has brought the Dudley Library to life. I, I purposely went to Webster Library. I know it's going to be huge when it's built, but I purposely went there to see what they had. They had nothing. We're a five-star library that's gone down to a two-star library. I live next door. I watch what goes in, who goes in and out, what goes on. It's empty. The children are sad. And this isn't even about, it isn't even about us adults as, as being an adult. It's about these children, what's best for these children. <coughs> Kathy's been here for 13 years, has taught them, has everything. How to read, how to be polite. He, how to, Listen to the parents. Even listening to the parents, 
she's shown them the right ways to be. And I don't think Kathy should have been fired for something she didn't say, but I don't see the person who actually said it here. Cowardly? I don't know. I think she should own up to her own words. But if Kathy did not say anything that is wrong, she should not be fired. And I think Kathy is her own person. Kathy was, is vibrant. She always, always was, the children were her first, first most thought. Not the adults in the library, not the other librarians, excuse me, but not even your, as a director. Her main thought was for them children, what can I do for the children of Dudley, Webster? They came from all over. And if she leaves, there's gonna be a big hole in that library. It's not gonna be able to be filled. Because I don't think there's another children's librarian out there that can even stand in her footsteps. Thank you. Welcome. Just one more, we'll finish it up with one more. If somebody else, one more person wishes to speak. My name is Linda Yacuzzi. I'm a Dudley resident. I'm also a grandmother of an almost three and a half year old, the light of our lives. Um, we go to other story hours at other libraries. We gravitate to Dudley. My granddaughter will be driving down West Main Street and she'll say, are we going to the library? Are we going to see Miss Kathy? Miss Kathy taught her. We said, she is your teacher. She knows that she sits quietly in front of her teacher. She knows, Kathy knows every child that walks in there. She knows what stuffed animal they like, what book they like. She's just absolutely incredible. I see no smiles at the front desk. No one's ever said hello to me. I walk in, we walk in with Kathy, we walk into Kathy, and she embraces those children. They love her. But that's not what I really, said. you've heard that all, we all know that. Um, I worked in the legal field for 35 years. And I have never, ever witnessed anything like I witnessed at your last meeting. It was shocking that we pay the town of Dudley librarians and you too, like obviously volunteers too, but that no one had a chance to voice their opinion. I want, what I want to see is I want to see, no one knows what that affidavit exactly, we know that it was the woman's was there, she wasn't allowed to speak. She stated that she did not say those things. Why didn't any of us see that? Why weren't we allowed to see that? You know, why one infraction? You know, maybe she had some history with other people, <coughs> but that was long gone. She wasn't dismissed for that. She was dismissed because supposedly she said something about you to someone else. I've never heard of anything so ridiculous in my life. And I it's not, I will never go back again. I mean, is anybody here, raise your hands, is anybody here going to take their children to the library again? Probably I mean, to the Dudley Library? Every no, do you realize the harm that you've done? You know, anyway, I get very emotional over this. So, that's what I have to say, but I'd love to know what that app David said. All right, thank you all respect your opinions. All right, moving on with our meeting. Uh, next thing on the agenda is the review of the minutes of July 25th. Take a look at those, please. I may, Mr. Chairman, I think there might be more than one edition of the July 25th meeting minutes. Uh, you know that Pat and I were kicking some things back and forth. I'm not sure what we arrived at in terms of a final I, I did, uh, after asking you if I could make those edits, I did do the final one. So the one that I sent the other day is the final. That would be the 21st? Um, or the 20th? Yeah, great. Right. Okay. Yes. Can I ask just a pause if you please? So there's that, a lot good of points on the, on the Good point. Thank you. Um, we'll take a minute pause so everyone can do what they need to do. Thank you. Good point. I'm going to call 
few minutes later. I'm going to have another talk. This is crap is going to go. This guy, he's going to come to the front of this. If I may, I, I did check, and I, I do believe that there might be something at the very end. Motion by Pat Court, seconded by Richard Clark, Jeffrey. Oh. Jury. A bit of nostalgia there, perhaps? <laughs> perhaps. Cross out the word Jeffrey. <laughs> I know we sat on the same side. <laughs> it looked like we confused the two. So I guess he was here in spirit anyway. Any other additions, deletions from the minutes from Tuesday, July 25th? No, I like to move that we accept the minutes as amended. Okay, I have a motion to approve. A second. We have a second. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Next. We have the review of the minutes of July 31st, 2017 minutes. So if I may, Mr. Chairman, I would like to thank Mrs. Korch for uh, taking the minutes, that meeting. Uh, it, it, it was not was, easy. No, it was not easy. There was certainly a lot, of, a lot of things going on, a lot of moving parts. And I uh, commend you because it was unfortunate we did not have a videographer. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm a little leery of the fact that we did not have a neutral party taking the minutes. I don't know if that becomes an issue in terms of any legal matters that may pertain coming down the road. Uh, but that said, I think you did a commendable job. All right. Do we have any comments about the draft minutes as presented? Everyone had a chance to review them? I did. Any additions, edits? Okay. okay. I'd like to make a motion we accept the draft minutes as presented. Okay. I have a motion to accept. I'll second. We have a second to accept uh, July 31st minutes. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I do have a copy of the minutes, just on the chance that they were accepted. Um, if you could all, I will be signing my name to them. If you could just initial that you have, have seen them. I'll just quickly um, review it if you have. You can pass this around with it. I have mine. I can't tell you how many times I've reviewed these and tried to check spelling and even after I thought I had everything down, I still had one or two. I'm just going to go out for a second just to make sure. I do believe these went back and forth. To the letter. Okay. Uh, let me, let's verify that with Pat okay. when she comes I think back. The yeah. only complete record was whatever recording the uh, this oh, lawyer have. made of the proceedings. Okay. Mark again? Terry did see these, correct? He he didn't see the second uh, set of edits. Would you like to hold the vote for t after a lawyer saw the final version? I mean, I'm, I'm I hearing the question. I I'm just wondering. I, no, okay. I just I just didn't know if if legally we had any issues. Um, he, he the only things I added um, some uh, information that Richard had given me. I made the corrections to spelling. Um, I did receive a comment from someone in the audience who I trust implicitly, who's also a minute taker. Okay. Uh, regarding uh, the attorney's statement, and it went back to my minutes. I will confess that there were some words I had trouble reading. 
<laughs> and as soon as I heard this, I, I could read what I had written, and so I amended the minutes um, to reflect that. Okay. Is it still appropriate to ask a question? Yes, we haven't had to find no vote, have we? Yes, we did. We but did. Go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I just didn't. Hit, the attorney had taken um, he had taken an audio recording. Mm -hmm. So, are we going to be? Did he get those transcribed, or is that um, something? I that did ask uh, attorney uh, Terry, and he recommended that. He Not to. Okay, I got it. Believe me. Yeah. All righty. Next. Have those minutes come back to you? Uh, could I slide them your way? Is that a lot that of paper here right now? Yes, that's the sign. Great, thank you so much. And uh, they will be, um, all the documents we received will be provided uh, to Aura mm -hmm. along with the minutes. Okay. All righty, next thing on the agenda, new trustee candidate interviews. And since we only have two extra people here, <laughs> I think we may guess who they are. We have Randy Booth and Linda Hall. Why don't you both come, can't you make yourself comfortable right, right here and we'll uh, shoot some questions. Interrogation. Yeah, really. How do you wish to do it? Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I think that would be the best way okay. to do it. Yeah. Um, first, first. When we've had a resignation, which we have today, um, it is by law a joint appointment by the selectmen and the remaining trustees. The remaining trustees usually meet and talk to the candidates and we make a recommendation to the selectmen. We send a letter off to the selectmen and usually at their next meeting they deal with it and it's usually, it's, it's always been unanimous. So, so this evening, I may we, uh, I yes. attended the selectmen's meeting last evening, and yes. one of the things that they uh, bemoaned was the lack of opportunity, the lack of volunteers for a number of committees in town that I guess are just barely surviving at this point. And uh, I'd like to commend both of you. Uh, it's an embarrassment of riches in that we yes. have two very qualified, I would say, very qualified and interested candidates, and uh, with some of the other committees in town, had that opportunity. Point well taken, thank you. You're right. <laughs> and um, just for people at home, we emailed both candidates a list of one, two, three, four, five questions, just so, just informal questions, just to get some feel for their thoughts on the library. And at this point, um, heads or tails, we'll just ask, start with the five questions, ask one, and then ask the other. And if the uh, Trustees with the chime in, please do. Can we uh, maybe do one at a time? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I said we, I'd like to flip that coin. Are you, are you thinking that we should have one yeah. candidate here at a time? It's a public yeah. meeting, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can't, okay. it, it is, yes. Unless they wish to step out, it's a public meeting. Yeah. I mean, if you wish, one wish to step out and do this with one person, it's a public meeting, oh, so yeah. we have to allow you to stay in. <laughs> Ms. Hall, okay. we're calling to there you go. <laughs> no, I don't mind. All righty. So, first question for Linda Hall. Why do you wish to be a trustee? Uh, I think I have a lot I could offer in a trustee capacity. Um, I've worked at a library before. I've been going to libraries since I could first write my name and went to the old library here and on the other side of Schofield. Um, I'm a big user of the library. I'm in the library several times a week, and not only Dudley, but I also go to Worcester, Auburn, you know, all the surrounding libraries that are around. I venture into all of them. You said you worked at a library? In what capacity? Um, I was a page in Westboro many, many moons ago. <laughs> any follow-up for any trustees before I move on? Okay. In, go ahead. No, that was my question. Okay. In your opinion, what role should a library play within the community?
it should be a, a, a more active, it should play a more active part in the community than it obviously does. Um, I know with all this that's going on with Miss Kathy, is kind of throwing a wrench in it, but um, I know a lot of people use the library, but I think more could. I think we need to offer more to the public to make them more aware of it. Uh, there's people that don't never ever think of the library. You know, I'll say something about, well, why don't you go get that book at the library? Oh, I never thought of a library. I mean, either they don't think of it or they don't think it's useful to them. And then there's those, and I hate to do it like this, but guys, I have found that would just as soon not even have a library. It's like they don't even understand what they could make use of at the library. If I may, yes. you mentioned offer more. Do you have any specifics that come to mind? Oh, I do. I have two pages. Two pages? Okay. I don't yeah. think we have we've we'll enough time for that. We'll right. Top five, please. Well, I'm not giving them all out to you. <laughs> <laughs> Even them close to the rest. Okay. No. Um, some coffees offer li um, some libraries offer coffee in certain sections in the mornings. We've for discussed like that. The folks <laughs> that go in to read the paper yes. or get on their computer yeah. or whatnot. Um, I think that'd be an awesome idea. I think we need to look into offering more free classes. I know that there's yoga there, but there's such a lot out there that we could touch on, like different crafting classes. Um, something for the men that might draw the men in the door so that they can see what there is there that they could make use of. And a suggestion box to see what people have thought of. And you hear what the public has to say. What qualities do you have that would help the board or and the library improve? Well, I've always worked with the public. Um, and I have worked in a library before. And like I said, I do get into quite a few of them in, around. Um, if I'm just out cruising, which I do sometimes, I just jump in my car and take off, and I pass the library and it's open, I'll stop and go in just to see what it's like and what they have. And I think I have a lot that I could offer over time. Are there any changes you would like to see at our library? Well, you hit a few things, add a few things. How about Changes. Add a you've said you've, you've already given us things you would add, but uh, about changes that you could say, would like to say. Open more hours, and I know you're working on sat. Oh, Saturdays went through, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. that starts in a couple weeks. And offer more classes. Do you consider this a long-term commitment? As this appointment will end on June 30th, 2018, will having to collect 50 signatures from Dudley registered voters to put your name on the ballot for another three-year term affect your decision? No, no, no. Good, I'm up then. You can carry mine around too. <laughs> 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 uh, trustees, anything else? For Linda, this moment. All right. Well, yes, we go do, ahead. We do have a requirement on a weekly basis that we do have to sign the, the bills. Uh, yes. That has to be done in a somewhat timely fashion. Uh, four, four of the six. I'm sorry, four, four of the six, six right. Uh -huh. Admittedly, but occasionally we run with five or fewer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 
would you have any questions or concerns in terms of availability doing that on a no. regular basis? Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. We have a monthly meeting, unless we have specials, and which is rare. Fourth Tuesday. And it's the fourth Tuesday of the month. And as Richard said, we sign the invoices usually somewhere between Friday later in the afternoon, Karen gets them all ready, or pretty much all day Monday, and then she hands them back into the uh, town hall Tuesday. Why do so many have to sign off on them? It's a town thing. Well, it's in our bylaws to begin with, so uh, we're obligated to conform to that, but uh, we would have to change. It also keeps us in touch with what's going on at the library. Oh, you know, true, different right. things that happen, you know, any kind of maintenance issue. Usually mm -hmm. Karen gives that in her report. But, you know, it, it just lets us know, you know, funds that are coming in and out of the library for its upkeep. Contracts and things like that. Exactly. Yeah. And the books that you order. Yeah, you're just looking at the titles to see yeah. what's going in. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I try to have them ready either Thursday night or Friday by noon time. So really all day, the rest of the day Friday and all day Monday and Tuesday, unless Monday's a holiday. Mm -hmm. So then I have Saturday. Saturday. Oh it's, yes, it's then you'll have Saturday. It's good, Saturday. thank you. Yeah. Good, thank you. It's now be there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so it's never, not really a problem. Everybody's pretty good. Yeah, no, that's, it's just when vacation time comes yeah. around or when we're down one because we still have to have four. And I can have Greg as my fourth. Yeah, the town administrator can sign if we need some. So sometimes we, vacation Mr. Chairman, we do have yes. additional questions if time permitted. Do you want to go on to those? Why don't we go through Randy's and then see what time we're at, and we'll, okay. we'll go from there and see if you're comfortable. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. Uh, why do you wish to be a trustee? Um, as I mentioned in my application letter, I believe that literacy saved my life. Um, I grew up on the main, in Maine South, in Worcester, to a single mother who worked at Dunkin' Donuts. I have severe bilateral hearing loss and received speech therapy until I was 18. Um, I was raised by my grandparents, and I attended the Worcester Public Schools until I was 18. And I was fortunate enough to receive a full scholarship to Holy Cross. Um, I majored in English there in education, and I decided to become a teacher. I taught in the Worcester Public Schools, high school English, for several years before the birth of my twins. And um, they were in the NICU, and it just changed who I, it rocked me to my core. I want everything I wanted to do, I wanted to do for them. Um, and as I said before, that's when I, literacy saved my life. That's when I started, I decided to work at the elementary level, and I earned my license in ESL, English as Second Language, and Moderate Disabilities, um, and Elementary. And I, um, I, we moved to Dudley with our three sons, and I became an ESL teacher slash reading teacher in the Dudley Charlton uh, Regional Public Schools. I've been there since 2011. Um, I am just about done with my reading specialist license, and Basically everything I do, I want kids to learn to read. Reading saves lives. Reading keeps children out of jail. Reading keeps crime levels down. That's why I want to become a part, a trustee on the committee. So. Thank you. Thank you. May I just say something? I don't mean to dis disrupt your, your uh, telling us about your interview anyway, but I really do commend you. Uh, back in the uh, 80s, I was a big sister to a young lady on Oread Street. Oh, where are so you? I know the difficulties of, uh, yeah, Worcester South. I grew up on Hollywood Street. Did. Wow. I was very blessed. Yeah. I wouldn't have changed anything. Yeah, yeah. And she I'm was not. with her grandparents too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> in your opinion, what role should the library play within our community? I think a library, along with other organizations, should be a lighthouse in the community. I think we should draw people together. I believe that, as Ms. Hall mentioned, that more programs should be offered. Um, you came super prepared. I commend you for that, because I do not have a booklet of ideas, so I commend you for that. Um, I, as I mentioned before, I believe a library should bring people together. Um, I've worked from the kindergarten level to the senior level. Um, 
and I believe that kids need to feel safe. They need to feel part of their community. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes a community great. So I believe while uh, we just need to have more programs, especially, especially to draw the young people in, because where there's young people, there's life. Um, not saying that with older populations that there's not, but I believe that young people can bring a very much wanted breath of fresh air. Um, so it doesn't have to just be literacy-based programs. It could be programs, um, for instance, for children who, I know we had a Lego program earlier. My boys loved Legos. That would easily draw them in. Out of my three sons, I have one boy that is terrible, like he just absolutely loves reading. He's a little bookworm. My other son, Timmy, who's seven, he's still on the path of learning how to read. So, you know, he's doing his Dr. Seuss books. He's doing all that. There's no pressure. I want him to read what he wants to read. My other son, ugh, he's more of a math kid, and that's okay. That's okay, because I, if kids enjoy reading, if they feel safe, and the library is a place where they want to be, who knows what might happen. So. What qualities do you have that would help the board slash library improve? Um, I believe I'm a team player. I, anything that happens in a meeting stays in a meeting with me. Um, I keep things confidential. I have young children and I've been part of the um, school, of the Dudley Charlton schools for going on six, seven years. Um, and like I said, I, I think I'm kind. Well, I don't think I'm kind. I know I'm kind. I know I'm considerate. I like to consider where other people are coming from. I'm empathetic. Um, I like the meeting of the minds because everybody has something to offer. So. I'm creative too, so I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any changes you would like to see at our library? I think positivity is important. Not that you are not all positive right now, but I think we need to keep our heads towards the future and we need to stay positive here. We need to, there's always going to be naysayers and that's okay. That it is what it is. Every organization has naysayers. I, I just think that we need to be positive. We need to figure out ways to draw the young people in. And we have more and more minorities and immigrants coming into this small town. And they're not just Polish. They're from Egypt. <laughs> they're from Puerto Rico. They're coming in from Webster and Southbridge. Our school system is a beacon of hope for a lot of these people. So I think that's what we need to do. We need to figure out ways to get these people in the library. Because if these kids go to the library, their reading will likely improve. And that, and also ESL classes. I used to teach adults ESL before I went down to the kindergarten, first grade level. And parents want to learn so that they feel confident enough to talk to their children's teachers, to administration, so they can take steps in the community. So that's what I'd like to see happen at the library. And the last question on this list, do you consider it a long-term commitment and it will take 50 signatures next June 30th to get on the ballot for the next three years? I do consider, I would consider this a long-term commitment. Um, getting 50 signatures should not be a problem for me, knock on wood. Um, yeah, and you, I mean, I'm definitely not selling my house, I'm moving to another town. I'm staying in Dudley for a long time, so. Perfect. Thank you. Now, I will entertain comments and ideas from the board. It's about five of six. Do you wish to go on to this? more questions? I do have one question. And, go ahead. and I know the question for Linda because I see you at the library all the time. But how often do you use our library? How often do I? Well, a lot of times I grew up in Worcester. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I take my children to the Worcester Public Library. My mother and a lot of family members are in Worcester. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that's where I take them. A lot of times, usually a few times a month, my son receives tutoring at the library. 
But I'm a teacher too. I help, you know, I stay at school until about 4 o'clock, 3.30, 4 o'clock every day. Then there's multiple sports practices. But I think that the library can be a beacon of hope. If, and I'm sure, as we already know, it has been to many people. So. Great. Somebody pick a question you like. You can use the list or something you have, and we'll take a couple more and then move on. Is something you'd like, Kathy? No? I like this question, and I'll ask Linda. So, what motivates you, and have you used these motivators with others? What motivates you? Wow. Keeping positive, I guess, is what, yeah. And what was the other half of it? And then, since your motivator is staying positive, keeping positive, have you used that with others in relationships with others or okay. on projects or? Definitely. Okay. Yeah, I'm one that'll say 10 minutes on the pity plot and that's it. <laughs> hey. Well, I know how that was recorded. Yeah, I know. Though. Sorry about that. <laughs> So you picked your favorite among the uh, optional questions. I'll go with the first one that's listed there uh, for either candidate. Uh, would you describe a situation where you initiated change? Uh, what was it and uh, what steps did you take? Hmm. Well, change happens to all of us. Change is a constant in life, isn't it? Um, my mother, personally, my mother had a nervous breakdown last year and she ended up moving in with us. And how did I initiate it? I would do anything for my mother, just like I would do anything for any of the children I teach. Just like I would do any, any job I do, I do to the best of my ability. And I consider being a mother, being a daughter, being a teacher, maybe being a trustee on this board, it's a job. I will do it to the best of my ability and do whatever needs to be done to get it done. So change is a part of life. You either you know, go on the pity pot or you roll with it. And um, I roll with it. So that's, what, that's how I work with change. Ms. Hall? Ms. Ms. Hall, I'm sorry. Ms. Hall. Ms. Hall. Thank you. How do I deal with change? Well, I, if I we'll read the question Please. again. Describe a situation where you initiated change what was it and what steps did you take? A specific? Hmm. I guess the last job I held, I walked in on the first day and the filing system was, guys had been running the filing system. Sorry. <laughs> I, hey, you know, I did take this. Oh, say, say, what gender <laughs> bias here? <if> I, <laughs> put that on the record. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I'm not, yes, I'm guy dashing. But I knew the system had to be updated. So first what I did was I sat down and I wrote down exactly what types of files we needed, um, how to go about which type of filing system I wanted to choose, taking the easiest one and the most effective one and revamping it which is what I did. Thank you. Right. Everyone comfortable? Yeah. All right. Now the question is, do you wish to deliberate now, or do you wish to sit and think about it a little bit, and we'll have a meeting just on this topic, and um, I'll entertain your thoughts on this. I mean, we've done it both ways. How do we do that? <laughs> do we do that? <laughs> well, it's a public meeting, so. Can you, you have to deliberate in a public meeting? I do believe so, right. legally, yes. I think we do. Because shall we stay I, or shall I know we on employment, it's public. Yeah. once you have, it's you can have one you private can, can executive, but once that, everything public. Yeah. It's public. On, on. Yeah. Well, yeah. again, I, I think 
I'm going to go back to where I began. I, have, I commend both candidates. Uh, I'm very impressed by both of you. Um, gender bashing aside, uh, and, and I think that we would be well served to have either of you in this position. Thank you again for your, your interest and your concern in terms of moving the library and maintaining what we have and moving it forward. Thank you. Yeah. Is it appropriate for us to make a motion in terms of one candidate as opposed to I'll let everybody support? speak for a minute if they wish, okay. and then we'll entertain a motion. Yeah. I'm done. Okay. I mean, I agree. I thank you both. I mean, this is such a nice problem to have. We've been, <laughs> we've been known to have to go and ask people to come join us. <laughs> so, um, little differences, but not huge differences between the two of you. Um, it's going to be a tough one for me to decide. Uh, but I do, I agree with Richard. We just thank you. And don't hesitate to step back. The person who doesn't get it sent this evening or get the recommend. And again, this isn't the final because we will make a recommendation to the selectmen and then we have to uh, sit with them and they get the, we have to work with them to get the final say. Um, so I don't know where I'm going. I know. I wish we had two seats, honestly, because yeah. you both yeah. would be such a great addition. Can I make a comment? Yes, please. Okay. Um, I think with our current status at our library, we need some healing, and we need some we need some someone that can like really connect with our children again and bridge that gap. And when a new person comes in. Um, we need someone that's going to be able to, to help that person guide them through the school system and say, okay, here's, he, let me get you all the resources you need. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and for that, I, I, mean, I think that Randy might have a better edge on that one. Um, good point. decisions in the next couple months and we do need and I think either one would be great. Uh, is, okay. would I, be, I'll, I'll to make a motion. I'll point. entertain a motion. I would like to move that we recommend uh, to the Board of Selectmen they appoint uh, Randy Hall as the Well that would be yeah. interesting. We'd yeah. get both. <laughs> Randy Hall. Yeah. Randy <laughs> Booth or Linda Hall. We get them both. Randy Booth. Yeah. <laughs> Correct it. We could get both. Okay. No, I don't think we can but, uh, I don't think so either. No, I, I'm sorry. I apologize. That was a terrible that's thing. No, that's quite not right. <laughs> Randy, I'm sorry. All right, we have. Please a, amend that. Or yes. the we have a motion to recommend Randy Booth to the selectmen to fill the vacant trustee position. Do I hear a second? Yes. We have a second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Any other questions? And I'll put it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Yes, well, thank, thank you. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to that. ask Linda to come and be my administrative assistant. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. And if I may, again, the selectmen are looking for any number of volunteers for a whole host of positions that are available in town. So, uh, if they're, I, I, from what I can recall, they put together a matrix. So they have some way of getting a handle on this. If you had any interest in those things, they'd be more Possibly. than happy to see you. Yeah. I don't have a lot of spare time, but I do have a little spare time. Oh, I think they'd be yeah, more than happy to get whatever they could. From it. Thank you. Volunteer opportunities are listed on the website. 
Oh, are they? Oh, that's yeah. right, yes. They are. Yep. Yeah, we had this that's the matrix lady. Wait, if she's going to volunteer, she's going to volunteer at the library for people. <laughs> oh, I'm going to say, going to say there. You you do. Do. I know. Yeah. I just want to say I commend how you pause and you think about your answers. Oh, thank you. I really do. Too many people just speak, and I really thought your answers were brilliant and well thought out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're more than welcome. We're just going to continue with the director's report and go on, but it's a public right, meeting. I'm blow out of here then. Thanks again. Thank you. I have three children that I have to get back. Been there. Including um, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yes. After the selectmen have approved, Thank we'll be in touch. Actually, maybe ask to attend that meeting. Yeah, sometimes they ask, sometimes they don't, but we'll let you know. Thank you very we much. We do have contact yeah, information. Two weeks. Do, I do. Thank you. Thank it's two weeks from ten, yesterday? Yeah, they just, they just had one yeah, last time. Okay. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Would it be because it's Labor Day? It's two weeks Labor Day? Yeah, it'd be three is the most likely. All right, we'll, we'll find out. All right. Director's report, please, Karen. Sure. Um, well, you've got the July programs in front of you. Um, we finished up with the math science workshops in July. Actually, there was four Wednesdays in July and one in August. Um, that was funded by the Mauser Trust, and um, that was very successful. I'm going to recommend that we do that again next year. Um, I think the kids had a great time, and it was the the company comes in, and I mean, Mad Science comes in and runs the whole thing, so. It's, I think it's really worthwhile. It's bedlam. And, and the other good thing is a lot, of, a lot more kids than usual can participate. Usually it's 15, and these people let 30 in, so I think that's a big plus. That is. It's well yeah. worth the money. So relatively, relatively speaking, I thought it was inexpensive for what we got out of it. Good. So, um, and then the usual host of programs. Um, I was laughing when they were saying more programming. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm going to need more staff to run the more programming. <laughs> Easy to add programs, right? <laughs> I don't think, uh, as a fairly recent addition to the board, I don't think people fully understand all of what's going on no. until they get you know, a little closer to it. I mean, yeah, I know that. You kind of stick your foot in the water occasionally, yeah. but uh, the totality of it is kind of overwhelming. I know. When you look at the calendar. We run lean and mean. But we, we get it done. Um, so it was a, a pretty busy July. We, of course, had summer reading. I'll report on that in the next meeting because that ran through uh, most of August. So I report on that all at once. OK? Um, otherwise, we had a few fun things going on in July. We had the Raptor program from Horizon Wings in Ashford and um, Scott Jameson's Magic Show and, of course, Ken Korch and Pat from Cackleberry, probably spelled that wrong, Homestead. Um, that was a combo of children and adults, and that was fun and entertaining and um, educational with the with the, um, the live hive there. That was fascinating. Kids loved that. Um, and then we had a big showing, a good sh fair showing for the genealogy program. That's a pretty good, decent size for people coming just to learn how to start their genealogy. And that was um, that was no charge through Mass Society of Genealogists. So that was a great program. And uh, coming up, we, we as of course, we have David Omar White's um, work on exhibit only through September, as far as I know, unless the family decides to switch it up and leave it um, up further than that. I'm not so sure they've gotten quite a few. I think they've gotten inquiries about some of the work. So, so pretty. Yeah, yeah it's I pretty love neat. It. Um, it did get um, some airtime in the Worcester magazine. magazine. Um, so that was good. Upcoming highlights we have on next Monday, um, the August 28th, there's two seatings, 4 30 and 6 30. This is our Friends of the Library Fall Fundraiser Dinner at the Public House. This is we did it two years ago. They don't let you do it every year. We did it two years ago. It was a big fundraiser. This year, it's an all-you-can-eat barbecue under the tent. 
Um, tickets are 14 bucks for adults and five bucks for kids, ages four through 12. And tickets are available at the library, or you can buy them on the day of the event at the public house. How are ticket sales going? Pretty well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think we. Not so much for the kids. People. Right, right. This is more more of an adult type thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, I would say that not as good as the one two years ago, only because. Um, People seem to like the turkey dinner best. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. So you know, so strongly both ways. <laughs> yeah, but we've we we've had a regular a regular flow of people through for the tickets. We're going to give it a, another push um, on the social media sites and the newsletter. Probably do a one-off newsletter if you haven't gotten your tickets yet. You know, and at the there's a lot of them at the door as well. A lot of ticket sales happen at the door because people don't know what they're doing until the last minute. And then also, um, it's a, a joint, they do two organizations at once. So, and it, they don't distinguish between the organizations. So you split the proceeds. So it's, it's pretty good. Um, yeah. Um, on Mondays and Wednesdays, starting on September 11th, South County Community Partnership is going to be holding their Raising a Reader Story Time. Um, that they used to do just Mondays, and they've expanded it to Wednesdays, so that's great. We'll have them through the fall, um, and by that time, I'm hoping we'll have someone in place to pick up for the um, other two days of the week. Yeah, story time, same with two days of the week. We don't do both at once; we do one or the other. So, and people can sign up for that. Uh, through South County Community Partnership. It's for um, kids ages two to five and siblings with their parents or caregivers. I will have the flyer up on our homepage and I mean on our, yes, on our children's webpage and Facebook by the end of this week. I've got a bunch of stuff to get up on the website this week. Um, on Thursday the 14th, we have the final concert in the concert series, which will be Mandeville and Richards. That is on Thursday, September 14th from 6 to 7. It's free. It's sponsored by the Crawford Endowment. And um, they have been at the library before, and they're really wonderful. They're a great folk duo, um, a husband and wife team. They actually live in Webster, so it's a short hop for them. We had a great showing for them last, last, last year or the year before. Anyway, I think it was last year. On Saturdays, on the, starting on September 9th, the first Saturday that we're open, uh, we have a new chess club at the library. Um, it's for uh, those ages 12 and up, no registration, and it will be on Saturdays from 12 to 1. Um, so I'm delighted about that. We had our first one already. We have another one coming up. We have another one coming up. Um, Actually, in, in August, we had them on Wednesdays. We did two in, on Wednesdays because school wasn't in session. So there's another one tomorrow um, for anyone who's interested. Um, it's from 3.30 to 4.30 tomorrow, which is Wednesday, the 23rd. And that'll be the last Wednesday one. Um, so it's no registration and just show up. And they have chess boards, like little portable chess boards, and it's in the teen room. So it looks Seems like a lot of fun, and then we had five people for that. On the you said that young man. Yeah. That? Right. Yep. So um, that that will be. So there's one tomorrow from 3:30 to 4:30, and then in September we're going over to Saturdays just because of school, sports, and things like that. On Monday, September 18th, from 6 to 7, we are having a teen dating violence program. Um, it's free and open to all in grades 7 through 12 and their parents and caregivers. This is presented by New Hope, which is a social justice organization that um, they visit different other organizations, nonprofit organizations, um, and talk about this kind of stuff. That we'll have another one um, in, the, in November on a different topic. But this was no charge and um, just maybe a stipend, you know. That where, where are they from? They, I think they're out of Attleboro, but they do have an office locally. Yes, they do. Yeah, I well, believe it's in Our Western. United Way supports them also. Yeah. You mean the Webster Dozing areas? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't familiar with the name, frankly. Mm -hmm. 
Karen, have we contacted the schools? <laughs> Thank you. I'll be sending the flyer to the schools. Like I said, I've got a lot of program stuff that I, I have. But it'd be neat if we could get in the Shepherd Hill newsletter our own. Well, form. I'm wondering if Greg Desto can even like Twitter it out. I for think us. what what we do is we send it to them. It has to be approved by him. Right. And then he um, then it, it goes in their virtual backpack. Okay. Yeah. So that's good. Excellent. Great. Whether he chooses to, but it does go to him. Does, um, do the guidance counselor, does the guidance department know about it? I can check. Because that might be a really nice yes. promoter. All right. Yeah. Because yes. that, that's a really hot issue in, in high schools oh, yeah. right now. So they, they would love to. I had planned to send it to, I think it goes to uh, Mr. Desto and he, he distributes it. I don't think, I think that's like the plan Clearing of, sure. yeah, exactly. Um, I don't think they want us just sending it to random yeah. people at that's the schools. Cool. Everything goes through him. That's my understanding anyway. But I'll call and find but out. Do stress that it's 7th through 12th because that'd be the middle school and the high school. Right. Yeah. Excuse my ignorance, but the local parochial schools, do they go to grade 7? Any? Um, All Saints Academy goes to grade 8. Grade 8. eight. Yeah. And so does St. Joseph's. We should maybe reach out to them as well, I would think. Good idea. Good idea. I definitely will. I actually had a very pleasant conversation with the librarian at Shepherd Hill today. She called me because she had some um, town reports. She was mucking out and had some town reports and wanted to know if I wanted them. And we got to chatting and she said she had never been in contact with you know anyone at our library before. She's been there for a year at Shepherd Hill, the librarian. So I was absolutely delighted to make the, co the contact. And when she brings the stuff down, we're going to meet and chat about possible collaborations. In the future. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Students like her. Yeah, a lot. Anya mm -hmm. is her name. Yeah. She seems, oh yeah, she seems very no-nonsense. I really liked her right mm -hmm. off of that. So. Um, just another thought that came to mind, too, is we do have the uh, Bay Path, of course, the regional school in the area. Might want to reach out to them as well. Oh yeah, I definitely would send it to them. I know the librarian there. Okay. Um, do you send it to the superintendent over at Baypath? The notice. The notice goes to. Um, I would send it to the librarian and have her distribute it. But I'll find. I, you know what I plan on doing is just having a list of contacts for all this. You know, organizations. Right. Right. So that we don't have to really agonize over, you know, like who here, who is your point of contact for any kind of, right. you know, um, announcements that we want to make, mm -hmm. and then we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that's that's fairly useful. Um, let's see. So, on Monday, September twenty fifth, from six to seven thirty. Um, Julie St. Francis is going to be holding an essential oils workshop. It's free with no registration and participants will be able to make their own blend of essential oil at the end for a $10 fee. And that's all goes directly to her. We don't get involved in any of that. So we're pretty, we're excited. I thought that was an art one at first. No, that's <laughs> I did too. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the guy who's us. <laughs> that's actually very big right now. We're doing oil painting. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like oh, I'm okay, seeing right it more. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know more so I do have, I have another program that I, I actually forgot to put on here that um, we were just ironing out the details of um, today, and that's um, on the 21st. 21st is a Thursday. So Thursday, September 21st, from 6 to 7.30, we have um, Greg Mychak coming um, to do um, pastel paint, the million dollar flower. That will be registration, and um, that is sponsored by the Friends of the Library. So, so we served the per purpose, Richard. We did. We jogged her memory. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'm sure he has. He's like I said, I've got, a, I've got a bunch of September program things that need to go into the. And he'll provide his own essential oils. <laughs> on Thursday the 28th um, we have another genealogy group presentation by Sarah Campbell um, who um, is just she just travels around and does presentations on 
um, different topics related to genealogy. And it's, they didn't change his name at Ellis Island. And she's going to cover searching for records of um, immigrants, immigrant ancestors. So, and that is registration, and we have sign up at the library. Let's see. Those are just the highlights, but I encourage people to check our online calendar as well to see just miscellaneous and ongoing programs. Um, let's see, so that's programs and events, and then if you want to pop over to the FY18 budget, um, we're just about where we should be right now. showstoppers there. I don't know if anybody has any questions about that. Um, let's see. I did submit, <clears throat> there's two report, state reports that are due in August and September. The first one is called the ARIS report. Don't ask me what ARIS stands for, but it's it's all statistic related stuff. It's no financial type information. It's all statistical. And so that's been submitted and I know they got it. And part of that, um, like interlibrary loans and things like that is a very um, key element of what determines our state aid. So off of the ARIS report. Um, and I've left a copy of it in the folder where you guys signed. So, and I left last year's as well so that you could look at last year's. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, let's see. The financial report will be in September. There's a workshop on the 5th, I think, um, that I'll be going to in Marlboro because they change things from year to year. Um, and then that's due mid-October, I want to say. And then everything kind of goes into the hopper. Mass Board of Library Commissioners meet and look at all the reports and all the submissions and then you get a disbursement in November and a disbursement in April, I want to say, something like that. And that's, that will be the total state aid. And a lot of it also is dependent upon the state budget too. That's why they break it up into two. So, um, let's see, so that's that. Um, I did the internal posting of the part-time temporary CERC position and then that went out to the um, public um, on the 14th. Uh, and that I would like to, um, I believe the closing date on that is the end of August. And I've already started to get some pretty good candidates for that. It's, it's temporary and part-time, but um, there's still good candidates. A couple of them already work in libraries, so. I was hoping I would get someone. Yeah, and I actually did see, um, I saw Tasha, we, she stopped into the library oh, um, yesterday, and yeah. she, Good. she seems to be doing well. So we're, we're looking forward to having her back, yeah. probably at the beginning of the year. Um, I'm anticipating that this will be a four to six month position. So, kind of filling in a few hours here and there, mm -hmm. but um, I can't, my part-time staff can't, average more than average 20 or more hours mm -hmm. for the entire for an entire year 12 month period so i'm trying to be very careful about that mm -hmm. that's when i realized it was going to be longer term than i thought that we would advertise and go out um and then the youth services position um, was posted internally um, last week and went to the public today um, this morning and we will accept applications through the 20th of September. And um, I did send it out to some of my area library directors and a couple of them actually wrote back to me because sometimes people are in a part-time position and they want to step up into a full-time mm -hmm. position. And that was the case with one in particular. So. It's great if they already have a little bit of the training with Evergreen, which is, it's, you know, it's fairly pedantic, but it's a necessary part. And if someone's familiar with the online system, our integrated library system, then that's a big leg up as well. So, what do you have a copy of the posting? I don't have it with me, but I can email it to. You. I'll I can email it to all of okay. the trustees. Why don't I do that? Thank you. Sure. 
we had over we had redone the job description a couple of years ago, about two years ago. All of the job descriptions actually. Right. Um, it was at the behest of the personnel board. So um, we did that and so it's fairly updated. And um, the position description is just like a kind of a shortened version of that. I mean the posting is a shortened version of that. So. Um, the computer upgrade status, I did have our, um, our IT company retrofit come out and what they do is, I've got the 13 computers and they're going to be um, replacing the adult computers and, um, or most of the adult computers and I'm going to do the children's um, online catalog as well because I have an odd number. Um, we have 26 <coughs> total that need to be done. And so we're going to do these 13 and then kind of regroup. I, you know, it's a lot of work, so um, I'm working with Mike from RetroFit on deploying them. He came in. What they do is, you know, they send, the, they send their guy in, Mike from RetroFit, and he sits with me and we walk through all of the steps that are necessary. And I, I say, you know, oh, I can do that, I can do that. You know, I try to save as much as I can. But some things I just, I mean, you know, I'm not an IT person. So um, I can do the kind of the grunt work, I call it. And um, he, he sends me back um, an estimate of how many hours per computer it's going to take. And that's how we can determine how much block time we're going to need. So he just got back to me. I, and tomorrow, I'm gonna, I need to look at the, you know, the list of things that he's going to do, list of things that I'm going to do, make sure there's no changes to that. And then we'll make an appointment. And I expect that we'll be working on that for you know, I'm hoping that we'll be done with that that particular part of the project. Um, I'm hoping by the end of September. He won't be able to do all 13 at once. So. Um, and touch screen on those. Really yeah, you know, um, I was going to say, I did get um, quotes. These computers were, I think, in the 800 range, the ones that we bought. They're pretty beefy, um, pretty solid machines. And the touch screens came in around, I think, 940 or something. And what I was going to do was maybe put one in the adult room and one in the children's room. Right. So if you guys are OK, you don't need to vote on it or anything. But I, I like to let you know, mm -hmm. you know, and get your thoughts on that subject. So mm -hmm. um, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, for the kids, it's, you know, I think one will be sufficient in that room, um, unless you think otherwise. <laughs> you know, Time will I guess tell. we'll have to see. Yeah, exactly. If they, well, you know what? The one I could order the two, toward. and um, those will be like the next thing, and mm -hmm. then we can see how popular it is, and you know how how much the kids gravitate towards it. But with adults, you know, I think I mentioned that some people have trouble holding the mouse still, and mm -hmm. so that would be a good sort of accessibility type computer. For no, I think it's a great idea, but yeah. I can see it. And lazy, it's the lazy adults going towards right. it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just say, I don't want to type. I'm going to just push. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see what what happens. I mean, one of those you know, placards on. Yeah, well, right. and Mike, we may have to talk about you know, have yeah. first priority to be used for this adult one. We did one actually one. have one of those at Killingley that we reserved. Yeah. For. Yeah. So I just don't, I, I wouldn't want it to not be used because exactly. of that. Exactly. So much of what goes on revolves around technology. Uh, I wonder, do we have any opportunities in terms of staff training? Have any of the staff indicated that they'd like to be trained further with regards to the technology that's involved? You now, someone is a backup to you, for example, I understand you're doing a lot of what you determine, you know, call the grunt work, but is there someone on staff who's indicated an interest in this that we could encourage? Or well, maybe we could keep that in mind in terms of our any hiring in the future to try to look for someone who has uh, a heightened sense of competency, if you would, regards to computers and technology. You better believe it. That's that's absolutely okay. Better which part am I better believing? The first part, the second part. H high degree of competency right. with okay. um, technology, and 
you know, all kinds of social media and stuff right. like that. Right. Well, social media, I think. I don't know. Um, really are you asking? Point, are you asking if a staff if there's member anyone on the staff has indicated an interest, uh, if there's any opportunity, we could encourage that in terms of some training that might be available. To but them. what um, you mean for a staff member to train a mem train the public? No, or well, it, perhaps to train the public or to be trained themselves in terms of a backup person potentially, if need be. I, obviously, we're looking at I think at they Saturdays know as much now. as I do about troubleshooting the computers. We do okay. retain retrofit for the big stuff. Right, I understand. And, um, you know, we're so slim, Richard, that um, as far as helping people, we do, you know, if I have two on the front desk and someone needs computer help, then that's great. You know, we're able to provide that kind of service. And today was a great example. I had somebody who was trying to upload pictures to her Facebook page. And, um, you know, she was an older gal and didn't quite have, you know, the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And um, I was able to help her because I was out at the front desk while someone else was maintaining the front desk. But in larger libraries with larger staffs, they usually have a tech person, right. a part-time tech person. Okay. Now, that being said, um, one thing that I was exploring, I do have a staff member who has a little bit more of a bent towards technology, and um, she and I were chatting at her last performance evaluation, and I said, you know, what, like, what kind of projects would you know you entertain? And she mentioned like a, you know, kind of, I, I, I noticed that Killingly calls it book a techie, and you can book this person, a member of the public can come in and book this person for a half hour or a full hour increment. Mm -hmm. And she would do things like to help them set up an email account, <clears throat> no, like banking or anything like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I, we would have to do their taxes more than this. pretty careful about that. You'd be surprised. Um, and you know, set up an email, help them, show them Facebook, or you know, those kinds of kind of the basic computer stuff. Do a Word document, yes. things of those mm -hmm. nature, of that nature. And so she and I are going to get after that as soon as we get oh, good. a full, you know, a full crew on. Thanks. That's on the docket. Well, that like I'm really looking forward to that right. because it's you know that a couple of our candidates mentioned, you know, offering more classes. I think was the mentioned several times. Yeah. And, uh, that certainly would be a one-on-one -on -one type of right. situation. It's easier one-on-one -on -one because every everyone has their own particular computer oh, yeah. and their own particular device. And I used to teach, you know whole classes down at Killingly Library on um, downloadable E and audiobooks, but everyone had a different device right. and it was insane. So we ended up doing the one-on-ones. It was much easier, right. you know, because otherwise five out of the six people sit there twiddling their thumbs while the sixth person gets the help. So and my question to you is that um, from the school background, I know that at my high school we have a, a very very large National Honor Society, and I'm sure that they do at Shepherd Hill as well. And part of those requirements um, is is community service. Mm -hmm. So, you know, teenagers today are very well versed in technology, and I think if we reach out to them, maybe a kid might have like the inkling to say, "Well, I could spend two hours a week every, you know, this certain time to be the tech person on call, you know, at the library or something like." It's something I think to that's explore. a great idea. Well, if I may, Baypath actually there have programs in technology yeah. specifically. You know, right. uh, I know that it's probably covered part of the curriculum at Shepherd Hill, but I mean right. that is maybe just a bit more focused. I'm sorry, it might be some, and they also, if I believe, have National Honor Society function there as well. Well, and I don't know is that is your ability to like get the computers on online? Is that something that we could enlist those kind of students to help us out with? Or Not is really. that more programming the actual No, computer? I wouldn't do that because it's all like desktop security oh, and okay. um, really um, complicated software that needs to be installed and actually CW Mars has to get involved mm -hmm. because of their software. Right. So the stuff that, um, I, I don't think I would do that um, just because okay. of the value of the computers and yeah. And we're going to be able to go to some one person when there's an issue. Yeah. I mean, right. they, we don't want them blaming it on. It was that student who did it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, no. But well, after the fact, once yeah. we're up and running, rent a techie, because those yes. kids have the techie abilities right. usually. Yep. 
Um, I think we could give that a try. I know kids are, the, the co chief complaint I had when I was teaching the classes from the adults was that the kids just zoom right through it and they don't really show them how to do it. And, and so, that's, I think, where we come in to help them understand how to teach. So when you say we, be, you mean well, the teachers? Well, that's something that, you know, yeah. Randy and I could certainly help out with and, and take the kids through, okay, how do you teach a class? Like, do a little orientation kind of program on how to teach. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. Um, I will... Your names are down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, look at Randy, guess who just threw you under the bus. Saying she has three kids that she has to run home to. But no, but seriously, I, if we can involve the kids with their honor society hours, I mean, we get volunteers from the high school anyway, and the middle school. Um, and so, um, I will check into that with Bay Path and Shepherd Hill and see, you know, if you never know. I think mm -hmm. as time moves forward, the more we can get kids coming into the library at yeah. this point, the yeah. better we are. I have to say, I mean, you you guys weren't around when I first started. Um, we had we had a group in the in the teen room that was really tough, and they I think they were bullying and scaring away a lot of. There was some pretty big problems in there, and over time, we've seen you know of course they've grown up and moved on and stuff, right. but. Um, we've seen a better crop of, of teens coming in, and when the, the, the chap came and asked about the chess club, that was something I always wanted to do anyway. So I think it's a, it's a work in progress for sure. Yeah. So um, anyway, so that's... Interesting possibilities. I think yeah, I know. There's, there's plenty of ideas. <laughs> How much, you know, it, it takes a certain amount of time to... Right organize it and you know and make it happen so um, we have to always at least I you know try to stress uh, um, to everyone you know keep in mind that you know we're a small staff and we're doing you know we have to scale what we do to what we have to the resources that we have so um, the other the other thing I always keep in mind with volunteers is they they don't have the same commitment that you know if I were to book you know, um, Heather for, you know, have her be, when she's on with another staff member, of course, and just assign like, okay, from one to three, you know, we're going to have appointments on Tuesdays or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it, that's why I would be, I would hesitate to give an assignment. I would say from this time to this time, it's an open, an open thing. That way if the kid gets sick, yeah. oh, sorry, we have to cancel it. I'd be all over it. Yeah, I'd be all over doing something like that. Yeah. I mean, we, there's no reason we can't do both, you know? Right. Absolutely. I know the, the older crowd, I think, is more comfortable with, you know, um, an older person showing them just because I've taught these classes before, and that's why they ended up in the classes, because right. their son or daughter gave them a computer or a device and, you know, tried to show them how to use it, and it was like, oh, you know? And You're not helping me. Yeah, You're it's not frustrating. Me. I, it I've is, done that. It is. It's really <laughs> frustrating. Anyway, all really good ideas and worthy of exploring for sure. Um, where am I? Last. Last Ah, uh, yes. Um, I wanted to. I've I've already let you guys know this, but I I just wanted to you know give you an update. Um, the library um, sustained a theft on Tuesday evening, as you know, and I wanted to just mention that um, my report is nearly complete. The um, police are still reviewing the camera footage because we did capture um, images on some of the cameras, and so beyond that, I can't really say too much more. I trust that you'll keep us advised as oh, yes. the situation develops. I, I, something that I don't see on here, I, last time I know we discussed at great length the thing in terms of the restrooms, and hopefully that's still a positive addition. Well, Hector hasn't said anything to me <laughs> about them yet. Uh, yeah. um, I have noticed that the soap that I put in there disappeared like the very next day. Yeah. So That's unfortunately, soap, we may not need to get either new soap dispensers or yeah. something because the you know the pump soap right. hasn't been. Right. And that's part 
I'm not surprised either, and I'm pretty sure most of the toilet paper disappeared. So a lot more clean hands than doesn't. <laughs> Thank you very much. But um, um, I don't. I haven't gotten any complaints about it. Um, that's a double know, plus. I I don't. I don't see. I don't see any reason to change the what we've got in there. Right. We've got some wipes and things like that sure, in yeah, there, sure. and you know, I used them too when I was. Yeah. Open. So I think we also discussed, if I recall, the idea of a shelf. Something that someone could put a purse or whatever on while in the restroom. So I don't know whether that's oh, well, still a, a float yeah. or not. I noticed, it, it, if I may, it, the, the men's room could probably use one as well. I think, other than the floor, and there isn't much unless you're trying to balance something on the sink, there aren't many opportunities in terms of where you've got to put something should you bring something in or be sure. leaving the building with something. So a shelf in there might. Again, for the sake of gender equality. Well, uh, the way I addressed the shelf thing was I, 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 I have these at home and I just brought them in. They're actually um, the drawers on, on wheels, on casters, uh -huh. and they have a solid surface. Okay. So that also works as a place to set your purse down. So you have one for the men's room. You mean like when you're actually in the stall, correct? Is that what you no. mean? No. Oh, you mean at the. Outside of. Oh. Yeah. Listen. How far are we going into this? <laughs> yeah. I wanted to know. <laughs> you wouldn't know what these look like because they're in the in the kids' bathroom. Please, yes, I would not have one. Thank okay. you. Let's but if you that. want one for the men's room, <laughs> oh, I, 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 he would like one for Truthfully, the men's room. I have been in there. And, I'll see if I can scratch up. Hand, I think I do. And the third where do they go? They the floor. I mean, uh, or you try some kind of you know, crazy balancing act. Which doesn't I, always work very I, well. Yeah, so I, I, it, it wouldn't do any harm, thing. certainly. It might what? be a the baby thing. No. Do you have a baby no, that's thing? That's what they've done. I don't spend a lot of time. No, I'm not going to use that. There's one in the children's room. There is definitely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'd be very reluctant to use that, frankly. And you have to be careful using the sink because then the water turns on. That's right. That's me. I was doing a program for the yeah. kids and I had to change. And all of a sudden I had wet clothes. I went home in the costume because I put clothes on it. All of a sudden it started. The water started. Because as you say, there was no place to put it. Yeah. It's, oh, well. it's so funny that you brought that up because I thought about it. I actually did think about putting one in the men's room. I'm like, ah, they don't need one. So that's what I get. Um, we don't rate tonight. <laughs> that's all there is to rate. It's not our night. It's taking a lot of hits here, that's for sure. Oh, uh, um, yeah, I don't, yes, he did come and okay. check it. Because um, I know we had a storm after that. And I believe it's no been leak. fixed. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. We had a small leak in the, it was that, that crazy oh, rain we had a, a while, it was like over a month ago, I think. And. Um, we had a, a yeah. We had something. Come. It was a, I think it was a loose shingle, and he it's been it leaked one day and not the next. Or right. Yeah. It was yeah, crazy. So it? Yeah. We only got it that worst of the mm -hmm. storm days. Yeah. Does anyone have any more questions for me? Anything for facilities, budgets, miscellaneous? Let's go to old business. Right. Meeting minutes transcriber. Got to speak on this. Yes, but <laughs> I have spoken to uh, Mr. Bedekotis, and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing his name correctly. My apologies if I missed that one up as well. Um, and uh, he's spoken very highly of uh, the administrative assistant here, uh, Michelle. Michelle. And uh, I've spoken to her in the past, and she was very receptive to the thought that she might be available to do this. Uh, one of the things that I, I think that we need would like I would. I would hope that we would like to see is consistency in regards to our minutes. Uh, as I look back, there's a great variety. I know a uh, recent issue regarding to font size, that varies tremendously along with whether or not our good friend Brian has even mentioned on occasion or not. And uh, Forgive me for leaving you out in the past. Uh, but I'm not the only okay. one, I, I would hasten to add. Uh, we, we would at least have that and uh, I, Conversation. I think Pat, you mentioned that that last meeting that we did have. Uh, there were a lot of distractions and a lot of things going on, and I think that would take us kind of out of that realm where we're trying to concentrate on two things at once, and it can be very distracting. And none of us that I know of is a professional stenographer, uh, so handing it over to someone who has that competency, I think, would be a step forward for us going forward. 
as we may face other issues down the road that uh, consistency certainly would be an advantage. Now I, I'm assuming that that person would be doing the minutes based on the, uh, the video? I believe that would be okay. the case, yes. Okay. Yeah. And you know firsthand, Richard, that because it's technology, one never knows. There was that one yeah. uh, less than memorable occasion when we had video but no audio. So what I would recommend is that we still keep a rotation and just record the motions, any motions that are, are made. Okay. Who makes them? That's legally know. our responsibility. Yeah, that's that is, yes. That's our legal, legal responsibility is much less just than I think most of us have generally been putting into this. But, right. Yeah, uh, we've been putting more, but... We just the bare bones portion of it and uh, recording the record who makes right. and who seconds and it votes. Yes. And, I, and I do include when I turn in the minutes or I do include a copy of Karen's report too. So everything that she's, mm -hmm. you know, she's spoken about is listed. If it's the sense of the committee that we want to go forward with this, I would approach the town administrator again and you know, uh, see if we could firm something up. At this point, it's been conversation and everybody's been very positive, very willing, and uh, very receptive of the idea, but um, nothing is set in stone and there's it's, no commitment made. Will we be charged for this? Gotcha. I was just thinking, well, because I don't have it in my budget. <laughs> no, no, it's an interesting question. Uh, apparently, she has been given some kind of minimal gratuity from some boards in the past. Uh, in other cases, apparently nothing. Uh, I don't want to speak out of turn, and, and I don't hope that nobody feeling taking offense at any of this. But it seems to be all over the lot in terms of what is and what isn't. I would want to know that for sure because yeah. I well, do not have that. No, that could be certainly budget. given consideration. I think it would be minimal at, at best, at worst. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's my two and a half cents mm -hmm. in regards to that issue, anyway. And I don't know if uh, we okay, want to. Yeah. Uh, it becomes a motion, or we want to that. Yeah, yeah. I have no problem with that. I think it's a good <laughs> idea. Well, I will um, um, get but, yeah, back in to touch finish. with yeah. folks and uh, see if we can get an answer to your question. It will come back to our next meeting and hopefully have that. Great. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Good. The other thing I might add too is uh, looking around. Uh, obviously, we don't often have a number of folks in attendance, but I noticed that other boards have sign plates you know you, you know mr marcy is up there you know that mr sullivan's over here mr joseph's over here uh it's it's pretty easy to figure out who's who's on first who's on second we don't have anything and i think some of the other boards i've seen others that have as well i don't know whether we want to investigate the possibility of getting something like that in place going forward because otherwise we're just a bunch of anonymous placeholders <laughs> I'm sorry? Just a bunch of pretty faces. <laughs> well, on that side of the table, and it, it, at one point we had that side of the table. Over we here, had a pile of them for another board. Yeah, right. right. They used to sit over there. Yeah. I don't know what board it was. And they locked them up now or something. Water. 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 You know, I want to just you know, with the graininess of this and stuff, you probably can read them. Is that true? I don't but I might forget his name. I might. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I obviously had an issue with names tonight, so I'll be. I, I, a little more sensitive to that than I was at the beginning of the week. But it does make it easier for the people who are here and yes. have to speak to you to know who, who you are. I know. I mean, that, I think that's why the other boards use them in this room. Probably. Again, something we might explore, and maybe I'll, I'll mention that to the town administrator and see if there's anything in the budget for that. I think it'd be at a minimal expense. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, <laughs> do both. Yes. The they price would be right. It wouldn't be as pretty, but. Um, but they would be. They're very professional looking. But oh, yeah. Well, the better. It wouldn't be solid brass or anything. Oh, like no, I don't think we need anything like that. No, no, no. Just large print. No. <laughs> Believe me. Okay. Anything else on the old business? New business. We've talked about staff positions. That's right. been discussed. Updating the uh, transcribers. We've got Pat for the next meeting, but after that it may be a little point except for motions. Anything else need to come before us this evening? Can I ask a yes. clarifying question about staffing? Um, or how are the trustees involved in hiring? At this point, we're not. If we hire the director, the director hires below. I, would pro I was thinking about um, maybe 
putting together, because we've never actually hired a professional person um, other than myself. Sure. Um, so um, when I hire a part-time staffer, I usually don't involve the mm -hmm. trustees, but I, um, you know, I'll go through, so I'll set up interviews with, this is a part-time person staffer, I'll go through each of them differently. Um, I've hired a couple of those, and so I interview, and usually there's one or two standouts, and then I'll, you know, go back and forth a bit. Um, but with regard to the um, youth services librarian, um, it's very typical to have sort of a, you know, a few people involved in that. And I was thinking maybe another library director, and maybe a board member. So um, I'd be okay with that, um, and I would actually be very comfortable with that. So um, if we wanna, I, I plan to. That position is going to close. I think I said the twentieth of September, and um, I think we probably have a board meeting shortly thereafter. So, um, does anybody want to volunteer to be? You want to be on that? It depends what when it would be because I go back to school. Yeah. This well, if it closes on the twentieth, it'll I'll be interviewing people. Um, probably late September. I'll be setting up the interviews for late September, early October. Um, like I said, I, I figured I'd have a board member, um, maybe another staff member, mm -hmm. and um, another local library director. I've got the group that I meet with on a pretty regular basis. Um, so I do have a Jewish holiday in October, in September, but I don't, we I don't have a Jewish know. Canada. Yeah. No, I'm saying that I have a full day off of school, I know, that I wouldn't have an issue. Yeah, but I'm imagining that these interviews will be not all on one day. Okay. Um, no. they, they, yeah. yeah, usually it's I'll ha I have to set them up over the course of a week just because of schedules and things mm -hmm. like that. So I you did would be interested in participating? If the schedules collided, well, yes, I could help okay. out. Okay. I would just have to see what would. Sure. Um, I mean, we can we can play that by year two. You know, okay. I can let you know, and and then. Once you set it up, yeah. Send us an email, and we'll get I would, back to I you. I would like more for one of yeah. the trustees to be. I you know, will present. offer myself if you're not okay. available. Thank you. Your schedule doesn't work. Thank you. I mean, it can be more than one as well. So. Um, it's nice if it's consistent throughout the well, interview process yeah. because. Yeah. If you only see two and you see two, and yeah. then how do you compare apples and apples? I mean, it's yeah. nice if somebody can be consistent through the process. That would be my only, yeah, that would be my only thing is uh, that, you know, whoever's going to sit in on the on the right. interviews, you know, that that person be present for all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but this is going to be a very important hire. Yes, it is. Oh, Much yeah, for so sure. Whatever and as far as, you know, we're, I've also sent out some feelers on, um, you know, the, the salary um, the, the salary scales uh, because obviously ours have, hasn't been updated in quite some time so um, I'm working on that as well so. Very good. so we shall see but I did send uh, I sent the posting off to um, the group of um, library directors that you know this it's the central mass library directors as well I heard back from a couple of them that they have part-time, you know, people who are working in the capacity who want full-time, so there's potential for that as well. Excellent. Yeah. More to come. Right. Other questions? Just the very beginning. I'd like to make a motion and we adjourn. Motion is made. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. Just the end.